Well, good morning. Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Cut. So today, I'm sure the title and the thumbnail gave it away, but we are now into that phase, or I am into that phase, where I'm going to plan a project. And I got an idea for a project, something I want to write, and we're going to be writing this in Rust. So why? Because I'm trying to learn Rust. The best way to learn a programming language is not just to get a book and go from chapter 1 to chapter 99. The best way to learn a programming language is to decide on something you want to write, something that's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'm thinking some basic text boxes and some basic uh, inputs and some way to store this stuff. So I thought this would be a great project to start, and uh, it's just something I, I just want to do to see if I can get it done. So, you know, what I want to show you today is how we actually lay out a program or a project. So as I told you before in the past video, when we we're looking at uh, compiled and interpreted uh, uh, computer languages or programming languages, I told you that, you know, when you meet with a client, you have to get an understanding of what they want. So this will be the first part of the planning phase is an overall kind of like a broad uh, spectrum, I guess, is what I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in played around with Google Docs this morning, I really didn't even know this was there. I, I've never used it. Uh, they do have a drawing application. What's nice about the drawing application, as you can see here on the screen, you can have different fields or uh, kind of a, uh, there's a word for this, I, I can't remember what the word is, but uh, a flow chart. That's what I'm looking for. So you can have a flow chart of what you want to do and how you want to get it accomplished, all right? So the first part of my notes application is uh, doing the title, building a note-taking application with Rust. Okay, that's what I want to do. The second thing I want to do here is notes uh, is going to be a desktop application. And I'm hoping in the end here to compile it on three different systems, on Windows, on the Mac, and on Linux. So it'll run on three different systems. Once we get these three different systems set up, and running then we'll figure out the back end of it but primarily the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out the fields so at this point you'd be talking to your client you're going to say hey most of your clients you're going to get are probably going to be either desktop uh, web or desktop database applications or it's going to be web database applications all companies I've worked for pretty much in the past unless you're designing websites is just simply how do we collect and store data and how do we retrieve it? So that's primarily what kind of jobs you're going to be looking at. So the next thing I have down here is design a, a GUI. What will we be using for the GUI? And I finally settled on something this morning that looks uh, very promising. And I'll show you how to use it probably in the next video. We'll talk about that. All right. The next thing over is we need a way to store our notes. Now I have stored uh, information in flat text files and it gets kind of messy. What else happens with flat text files is they start to get very uh, overbearing and cumbersome and they're hard to move from computer to computer to computer. Now we could use a backend storage device like OneDrive, Google Drive, or I do like pCloud. If you've never seen it, check that out. Uh, or Dropbox. So you can use any backend storage and store those text files, but I want to get a little bit more sophisticated. So I want to use a backend database. So I have here, I'm going to either use MongoDB or I really like using, and I've been using for years, MyraDB. So MyraDB is a MySQL uh, functioning. It functions just like MySQL, but MyraDB is more uh, up to date and it seems to be that more people seem to work on that database engine because it's open source. The next thing we're going to do with our database is we have to set the fields up in the table. So we have to create some kind of table and understand MongoDB is not really a structured database language. Uh, MyRDB is. So if I use MongoDB, I'm going to have to also learn MongoDB, which I've never used it. Okay. So you notice I got an error from layout field going across to the right to set up the tables because the fields we have on the interface have to connect to the database tables. So they have to interact with each other. The last thing down at the bottom is connect the database to the GUI. I got designed the GUI on the left 
and you see I got an error going to the right because I have to connect it. So all the fields have to be connected to the GUI. I could even have cross connectors there if I really wanted that. So that's the things you should have to think about putting together for your application. So uh, this is what I came up with so far. And probably the next drawing that I would do is I would lay the application out how I want it to look or get a rough draft anyway to see what I want to build. So if we save that one, the next thing we want to do here, we're going to take a little peek here. Uh, new drawing. Let's open up another drawing here. Okay, I'll give it a title. Notes application layout. Okay, so what do I want my notes to look like? Primarily, there's a lot of note-taking apps out there, right? There's Notion. There's, um, geez, there's so many of them. I use a program called uh, Joplin, J-O-P-L-I-N, because it's free. It's open source, and I control my back-end notes. I don't want to pay for somebody to take my notes. I wonder if a company closes and you lose everything. So I do like to use Joplin. And I'm sure you'll see me using Joplin throughout these different videos because I told you we're going to build as we're actually doing the video so you're going to see the builds happening and uh, be that good or bad because remember I'm not a rust programmer so we have, we'll, we'll take it one step at a time but I do I have made a lot of programs so we're going to create a layout here so if we create a layout uh, we're going to do something like um, I don't know if we can put boxes inside of boxes but we're going to try it so we'll have a layout something like this all right, and then let's see if we can put another box inside of a box. Let's see what happens here. Ah, it looks like we can. Great. So here we're going to have something with our notes on here, just like any other traditional note program. And we may actually shrink this down a little bit here. And we'll see if we can put text above it. Let's see how nice this drawing program works. All right, so here's the uh, notes. Let's see if we can center that. Yep, we can. So we'll put all notes such as that. All right. So there, I'm thinking of a uh, you know just a drop down like a tree of all my notes that I'm going to have in here. So the next thing I'm thinking about is okay, I want to create some basic fields. Um, let's see how we would do that. We would put on here something like. Uh, do another shape here. Um, we'll probably do something over here, right about here, maybe. Uh, and we'll put text above this box, and we'll call it... Uh, again, this is a rough draft, so we'll have to see how this works out. Note name. Okay, so we're going to have a name. We're going to put the name in that text box there so we're, we know that we're laying this out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, I think we're going to add shape here. We're going to add down here uh, the note itself. Okay, maybe we'll do this, uh, something like this. Uh, we'll pull it down a little bit, uh, maybe up a little bit. Just trying to space everything out here. And here we're going to put a note. Something like that. Try to move it up a little bit. That doesn't look too bad, right? Not so far. All right. So move this up a little bit. Think of designing your your interface, your, your GUI, um, rough drafting it, just like building a house or a building, right? Nobody would build a house just by going out, taking some boards, throwing them on the ground, start pounding nails in. You start with a blueprint. Think of this as your blueprint. This is something that you want to see and you want, to, you, you want your final product to come out kind of like your draft. So we have that. We have all of our notes over here will be listed. We will have the note name. Uh, you know, the new note name and the note. Okay, the next thing we're going to need here, probably, I would think, will be, uh, let's make these kind of oval shaped, just, just to make them nicer. 
Okay, we're going to make a, a button. We're going to copy this button. We're going to paste the button. And we're going to put it beside here. And let's paste one more. And we're going to put it here. All right. So there, that's our buttons. That's what we're going to do. So this first button, we're going to say save. Uh, the second button, we're going to say clear. Maybe I typed a note. I don't like it. And the last button, we will say OK. No, wait. Clear. How about the Maybe we'll have a delete button on there. So there you go. There's our layout of what we want to design. So we have the first part is, uh, you know, the overall. Let me see if I can get back to this here. I know what this bar is up here. Can't uh, click out of that bar. There you go. Get that out of the way. Okay. The first part was we're going to do this, uh, you know, the, the, the node app. Uh, layout of the fields. So now we have a good idea of the application layout, what it's going to look like. We also, um, we still don't know the database part. I um, won't we'll worry about that until I get the application built. Once I get the application built, I'll figure out how to connect the fields to the database. That's, to me, that's the smallest. Hopefully, that's going to be the easiest part of this. And uh, setting up the field tables, that will be not a problem because if you look at the application layout, um, we now have all notes, so that's just going to be a running list of my notes. So you think of that as in the database itself, you think of what's going to happen in that database is it's pulling all the notes out uh, by index, or we'll do it alphabetically or something, or by date. We can do whatever we want. So the new note name, so we need that as a field, and we need the notes as a field. All right. And probably what I'll do is I'll put a hidden index number in there. So as I create a new note, it will be indexed as we go along. Then the next thing we have to set up uh, on the GUI we have to worry about is the save, the clear, and the delete button to get rid of a note. Maybe we don't want it anymore. And maybe we'll eventually go into the list and we'll be able to right click on a note and do something fancy there and delete it there. So, okay. So that much of it we have done. That's the planning phases. Okay. So that's what I want to build. Now, with that said, after doing some research this morning and looking around a little bit, and I told you that would be live, but some of this is going to be me getting stuff ready, or these videos will be 20 hours long, is we're going to be using um, this Slint, S-L-I-N-T, Slint. So Slint, if I go under Docs here, it can be used for Node.js, C++, or Rust. So... Um, looking at this stuff, there's APIs, there's tutorials, there's video tutorials, how you can do things, as well as project templates. So if I click on project template, project template will take you to, and I'll show you this, don't worry about this right now, I'm just giving you a quick overview, uh, a real quick overview of it. So uh, Slint, S-L-I-N-T, Rust template. And it shows you, it actually generates the basic GUI for you. So, now I told you don't copy and paste code. I did tell you that, didn't I? But if we have tools to help us get started building our graphical user interface or GUI, why not use those tools that are at your disposal, right? It just makes it a lot easier to do that. So this is what we'll be using to build our uh, GUI. That will look like this when we're done. I don't know about the exact colors, but uh, we'll go from there later on. But anyway, so let me uh, open this back up. So guys and girls out there, I hope you're enjoying these videos, this video series, if you're watching. Uh, if you do appreciate it, click on that subscribe button. I'd love to have you around here and uh, stick around with me and see how this project works out. Um, I don't really know when these videos will drop. I know I want to start working on this project. So I'll be recording every step of the way, and then I'll post the videos along the way. I'm not going to give you any certain dates or uh, days of the week. So you want to be subscribed to see, hey, when's that new video coming out from Jack's Tech Hut? I want to see what's going on with that application, that program he's working on. Um, and you can follow along with it 
I will definitely set up a GitHub repository for this project because I like to keep it in there because I do work on multiple operating systems, multiple platforms, and I work on multiple computers. So I want to have it on GitHub anyway so I can keep refreshing it on all my devices and keep working on the project. With that said, please, if you want to download it, I'll have the actual Rust files up there. If you want to download the whole entire package, you're free to do so. But I do want you to try to manipulate it, learn it, and uh, watch as I learn along the way. So again, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Give it a big thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And leave me a comment below and let me know if I'm doing a good job or not. And we'll see where this goes, guys, because I don't know Rust, but I am so excited to learn it. So thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, remember, stay curious. I'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now.